Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for November 4th, 2020, recorded around 3.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon into evening hours, we can see that we really don't have that much ongoing in the tropics, but down there in the Caribbean, we have, of course, Tropical Storm Eta, which has now weakened into a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. This will likely become a tropical depression uh, by tonight. And then now as it does so still, it is producing very heavy rainfall for all of Central America. Again, this whole entire area is seeing a very significant area of heavy rainfall. And this rainfall could lead in some cases over you know 30 inches. We also see that there's very heavy rainfall stretching out all the way from Cuba, all the way into the Bahamas and the central Atlantic here. This very broad area is caused by a cold front down across this region that has kind of stalled out, uh, creating a vertical shear profile that's cutting across like this, not near the storm environment, but just to the north of it. And that is what's helping to create that very elongated shape. Now we can see here on the zoomed in uh floater here we can see that the storm again very disorganized the low level center of circulation is likely now dissipating over the very tall mountains of Nicaragua and also over portions of Honduras this again is now moving generally towards the west and will keep moving westward eventually with some part of the circulation re-emerging over water within the next 12 to 24 hours or uh, more. And uh, after that point, it is likely to become a tropical storm once again by later in the week, probably by Friday. Uh, again, there's a very broad area of uh, circulation stretched all the way out uh, across this area from basically the eastern Pacific side all the way uh, through Cuba. This larger gyre setup is creating a, a kind of a focused vorticity spin on the northern side of kind of our storm right now on the northern side of the gyre. And this uh, created with intense pressure falls uh, is also going to help aid in the development of a tropical cyclone uh, and kind of retain that. You can see the official forecast from the Hurricane Center has the circulation moving over Honduras later today, weakening to a post-tropical system. However, at then that point by Friday uh, morning, by early Friday morning at midnight, this is now emerged back over water just to the east of Belize, where it becomes a tropical storm uh, the following 24 hours from then on Saturday. Now, after that point, there's a lot of uncertainty as to what could happen because Right now, we do not know exactly where a circulation is going to form in this area. And that's going to be very important. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, eventually, though, this whiz is going to bring impacts to portions of the Cayman Islands, uh, the Isle of Youth, and also Cuba. And Florida is now in uh, for some impacts. Again, the main impacts right now is going to be from gusty winds and heavy rainfall, creating flash flooding concerns, especially over Cuba and Florida. This is going to create a bit of a problem, and again, this is something that's going to have to be monitored very carefully uh, over the next couple of days. And then you can eventually see here by days four and five, it starts a northwesterly turn. However, when this starts, that turn is very crucial, and it could be over the state of Florida while it does that, uh, or it could be over the Florida Straits and the Keys and then make it out into the Gulf of Mexico, and then eventually it's going to have to recurve back at some point. So. What seems to be happening is Florida will likely take a threat of a landfalling tropical cyclone somewhere. Initially, right now, this is expected to make landfall in Cuba, to make landfall in the Florida Keys, back over water. And at this time, this is expected to be a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. So a modest to strong tropical storm uh, by this point on days four and five. Now, if we look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 500 millibar uh, geopotential height and vorticity. And what we can really see here is right now, this is from 2 p.m. this afternoon, so about two hours ago, we could basically see that there was an area of generalized vorticity that was out here near Central America. And again, this is kind of that larger gyre, but within that, you have the circulation of ETA. And this is very important on how this uh, evolves later down the road. Now, we can see that eventually... Part of the circulation 
will actually move back into the Eastern Pacific and continue over Central America. This part of the circulation, again, is not going to be the one responsible uh, for creating, basically, uh, the circulation towards the north. Uh, now, going ahead from there, though, however, uh, it is very likely that we will have a storm try to form on the northern part here of the circulation. Now, we can see uh, that by Saturday, we have a storm uh, that is very weak, but it is over Cuba. And in the 500 millibar flow, it's not very well organized. At the very same time, we have, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, earlier as I tweeted about it, we have a very big upper level low that's sitting right here over Texas and Louisiana, and this is trying to drift towards the south and east here. However, if we go back several runs ago, we can see how this was initially supposed to be positioned over Arkansas and Louisiana, and now it's drifted southwestward to be over portions of uh, really of Texas and we can see that kind of tr trend here where it has transitioned back over portions of Texas and the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. This is very important because not only does it allude to steering factor changes but this also alludes to a uh, kind of a lesser degree of vertical wind shear across the Florida Straits region and we can see uh, that by this time eventually this piece of energy does dig down and as it does so, this leaves nothing but another storm to rotate up and around here. So what actually happens is you get a kind of a Fujiwari effect where this pivots around and over Florida while the mid-level energy kind of pivots and dissipates over Cuba. So you kind of have this pivoting effect that occurs. And then eventually after that, this kind of just sits near Florida as we get entrapped between a trough digging in and a ridge of high pressure over here, very weak steering flow out in this region. Now, this is a possibility, but something like the European model, this is the 12Z Euro, uh, we can see very clearly has a little bit of a different solution, much stronger in the low levels here on Sunday. It's a little bit slower, and this is now crossing over Cuba on Sunday. And eventually, we can see that bend, this hard bend, uh, as this storm is still trying to organize near the Florida Keys here, near the dry, tor tor uh, dry tortillas, or tortugas, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, but anyway, that's how it's going to progress here on the Euro. Now, what's happening, big ridge of high pressure setting off to the north, and it is moving towards the east, which means right now the steering flow genera uh, generally is out of the west-northwesterly direction here for Eta. Uh, eventually, this gets here pretty well into the central Gulf of Mexico here with the ridge sliding eastward. Pretty predominant ridge. You can still very clearly see, so it's still kind of going westward with time. But eventually, it starts to round that ridge and then makes landfall here as the ridge starts to really abate. And we get this trough of low pressure to dig in. This carries the storm towards the north and east, making landfall in the Florida Peninsula. Uh, this is, again, very important because... You know, whether or not this really happened, or, you know, Panhandle, whether this really, really does or doesn't happen, again, is going to remain very crucial. Uh, but it does seem like it is a possibility that this will turn at some point. Now, even for what it's worth here, the European, or not the European, but the H4 forecast, rather, is much in the line with the GFS. Again, carrying a storm uh, basically right over Cuba, crossing over the Bahamas, and then curving back very sharply over portions of Florida. This is going to be very important going forward with time as, again, it's going to be, you know, very crucial to see how this is exactly going to progress. Do we have a storm in here that is crossing over Florida at this time or is the storm over the Gulf of Mexico? And that's going to mean a lot in terms of track and intensity. Now, in terms of the upper level favorability here, we seem that we are going... Uh, to have a pretty a pretty good degree here of certainty that there's going to be a very favorable upper level wind environment at least for the next couple of days. You can see what happens here uh, by Thursday is again we have this trough that's digging in towards the north and now this is creating a northeasterly flow here or a, really a southwest to northeast type flow here. 
Now, this is a very favorable environment for getting storms to initiate deep convection and try to bundle that energy in the atmosphere uh, for its beginnings. But once the storm becomes stronger and deeper in the atmosphere, this is by Saturday, we can see that this is going to change a little bit. And if we actually look here at an, uh, a vortex average sounding uh, for this storm, we can see that a couple of things are occurring. We definitely have some very strong vertical wind shear here. And we can see the wind direction changing with height here uh, on the wind profile. We can see it very clearly changing in the shear profile is roughly about 37 knots with a shear layer in the uh, mid level, mid and upper levels at 22 knots out uh, basically of the west. Now, again, this is very important because this would tend to have a storm that is less capable of intensifying significantly in this environment. We know the water temperatures support it, but the wind profile does not. And if we move this even forward with time, we can see that this really has trouble getting going and only finds a favorable environment closer to Florida while it's already approaching the Florida East Coast, uh, you know, the Florida coastline there on the eastern uh, side of Florida. Again, this remains very uncertain. However, what we can say with a pretty degree of certainty here is there's going to be very heavy rainfall event. And we can see here on the HWARF 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity values here that this uh, green area, this is all a high relative moisture in the atmosphere in the brown here. This is dry air in the atmosphere. Now, we can see that what's going to start occurring here is eventually we are going to have this big area of moisture try to converge here on the southern side. But again, this moisture is, is getting strung out with a stalled front and through here. So as we move forward here, this is by uh, 75 hours from now, by 15Z Saturday, we can see that this big upper level low that's sitting over here, it is trying to spin the storm this way. It's kind of trying to spin the storm out and around like that. Now, as it does so, this moisture is now getting wrapped around because the flow in the mid-levels is generally one out of the southeast to the northwest. So you're getting this kind of curvature here. And what this is doing is causing a lot of moisture to come into portions of central and south Florida. And this could create a very heavy rainfall problem. Uh, especially having rainfall concentrated over the next couple of days, really uh, a 48-hour period or longer. And then eventually the, the H-Wharf carries this over Florida as it pivots around. And you can see all of this moisture still being pumped into central Florida here. This is not necessarily um, you know, going to happen verbatim, but this would be a problematic scenario in terms of very heavy rainfall. Now, the one thing here on the H wharf is the sea surface temperatures. We can really see here that the sea surface temperature profile seems to be one that is very supportive of a tropical system uh, in this general environment. Wherever this goes, it has a very decent shot at at least intensifying somewhat. And the model trend today has been one towards a stronger storm uh, in the Florida Straits region, uh, potentially, again, impacting Florida, but we could also see that turn back and maybe doing something like that or in something like this. Again, a lot remains to be seen here, but if we look here at the upper ocean heat content map as well, uh, this produced as of yesterday, these uh, reds and whites here, this is basically off the charts here. And again, you can see very clearly uh, in the Southwestern Caribbean, we still have a very high amount or really in the Northwestern Caribbean, we have a fairly high amount of upper ocean heat content in this region. And even here through Florida, south of Tampa, and then of course on the Atlantic side, very high upper ocean heat content still remains and resides. So with that being said, there is still a lot to kind of keep an eye on. Yes, uh, there is the threat. Initially, right now, the threat remains for Central America for a very heavy rainfall event. And obviously, uh, for portions of Central America that includes Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, uh, and Belize. And then eventually this will continue through Cuba, crossing over Cuba, and then into portions of Florida, whether it's over the peninsula or whether or not it's over the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic side remains a very big question at this point. All right. 
That being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.